All right. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Glad to have you with us here at a Wednesday night Bible study. I'm going, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully real soon this snow will be over with and we can finally, finally be done with it. I am, I don't know about You're you, green. but I'm about, I'm about done with uh, the snow and ice. Uh, we're going to give everybody a few minutes. How you doing, Suzanne? Good to see you. Good to have you on here. Um, we're going to uh, give it a few minutes to let people join. Um, if you can, you know, share this to your uh, share this to your personal Facebook, uh, um, whatever social media you have. You know, we're just uh, get people on board. Amen. <coughs> And uh, all right. I'm still not able to hear anything out of my. I cut it off because I couldn't watch. Hmm? I cut it off because I had it on the back of the room. Oh. Gotcha. All right. Well, Brian knows what he's doing. He's our. He's our online tech guy. Him and James have got this all together, so but um Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, there is um, some sort of static or something. Can you hear is it still the same? And, yes, and you're green. And I'm green. Well I'm watching it live right now as well and it's looking good. So some folks was having problems with it last time too. But right now, it seems like it's coming in good. Um, how's it looking for you? Can Can Brian hear it? There is some static. Hey, let's. I know it would. That's much better. Um, I still hear it. <laughs> well, I hear, but I hear you better. I couldn't hear you hardly. Now I can hear you great. Well, you're there's still a lot of static when on your end, I think. Okay, let me see something here. Now I can hear you great. Hear it. Well, I don't know, Heather, Richard, do you guys hear it too? I do, and he was green last week. Well, he's green for me right now. I don't know why, but he's green. <laughs> How do I look to everybody else? There you go. That's better. Okay. I still hear the static. The static. No, it went green again. <laughs> All right. Well, somebody on chat here. That's strange. And yeah, with the stutter. Okay. I know one thing, uh, Brian, we may need to go through the house and make sure all the devices are turned off the internet as well so make sure we have good bandwidth all right well brian's going to be working this out I, I don't know if i'm green on your end right now or not uh, my side it still looks good so i'm hoping that event, eventually huh you're not green okay good deal uh, it's still green for me but it it goes to regular when somebody else talks for a minute, but then you go right back to green. Hmm. But I can I can handle it. Okay. Well, good. And I, I don't want to you know you know prolong too long. Uh, 
Brian's going to be working this out. Go through uh, and make sure all the uh, stuff's turned off Wi-Fi. Um, well, last week uh, we talked about uh, the fruits of the Spirit. Well, we began talking about the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, one thing about being um, authentic Christians is people are going to know us by our fruits. And knowing us by our fruits goes beyond just what we say we do uh, as far as living for God. Um, it's the actions. It's what people see every day in our walk with God. So, um, with that being said, uh, before we begin, I do want to uh, talk about a couple of things that are coming up. Um, so we have men's prayer and hangout this Saturday tentatively. Uh, me and Brother James talked about it today, and um, kind of uh, it's kind of up in the air. Um, so with that being said, uh, before we begin, okay, sounds better. Good. Um, so according according to the weather, it looks like it's going to get better. Um, it'll actually start warming up, at least warming up enough that we can uh, get to the church. Uh, but then again, uh, we're still we're still going to play it by ear. So be looking out for that. Uh, we'll let you know um, probably tomorrow or so uh, if we're going to push that off as well and it looks like we may um but we'll we'll let you know uh also the 21st is our ladies led service and we're really excited about that every uh every month we're going to have a different um uh, ministry group uh kind of leading the service uh from top to bottom from prayer to uh, singing to expression or, or whatever the case may be to teaching and speaking. Um, so we'll have the youth, we'll have men doing it. Um, so I look forward to it. I can't wait to see the other uh, departments uh, do that. Um, and so with that being said, uh, we look forward to having all of our ladies with us and I know that they are going to do a phenomenal job. The 23rd, we do have um, our hero Bible study. That's our ladies' ministry Bible study. And, um, and with that, uh, Sister Bray, uh, she leads that and has our ladies' Uh, come on to that. So uh, we look forward to um, um, what they're going to do uh, with our Bible study. Uh, I kind of got to listen in on uh, the last one. I was beside my wife. I was doing some school and stuff. And and uh, I tell you what, it was a really good uh, Bible study. Uh, so I know that they're doing a tremendous job with that. And so uh, we're we're you don't want to miss that, ladies. And I believe for now, uh, that is the classifieds. Uh, we do know that the Kentucky District Youth Department is going to be doing a virtual uh, launch rally, which will be online. Um, something we're wanting to do and something they've encouraged us to do is meet up at our church or something like that and broadcast it uh, to uh, on, on the screen and have all the young people there. So uh, we are looking at doing that. Really, again, it goes back to weather and all this. Uh, I think we're going to be cleared up by then. But Rima Duncan will be from Chicago will be uh, preaching and bringing the word. Look forward to that. If you have not heard uh, Rima Duncan preach, uh, you're in for a treat. He does a tremendous job. And I believe that is everything now. Uh, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Um, I know there's a lot of things to pray about. We need to pray for uh, Amy and uh, her family um, they there's a lot of things going on uh, house fire and just just they they need they need some prayer and we need to reach out to them and just um, and pray for them um, 
anybody else has any prayer, God knows exactly what they are. Uh, we're we're believing that God's going to continue to work a revival. He's going to continue to uh, bless us. He's going to continue to move. He's going to continue to do things uh, for the future. And I cannot wait to see what God is going to do. So with that being said, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you so much and we thank you. We ask that you continue to help us, minister uh, to us and through us, Lord, as we go and reach our community, as we go to school or work, uh, when those uh, opportunities are available, that God, that you would uh, give us wisdom to understand, to be sensitive to your word, sensitive to your spirit. And Lord, I pray that you would bless the Keen family and help them through their times of trouble. Uh, Father, you know exactly what uh, to do in these situations. And Lord, help us to be a blessing as well uh, to that family. God, I ask that you would help us tonight as we begin to study your word, as we continue on uh, striving to be authentic, um, authentic people authentic Christians, authentic servants of God. And we, we just look forward to uh, what you're going to do. And we love you. And everybody say in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, I don't know if uh, somebody somebody chime in. Tell, let us know who's all here. If you're, if you're on the Facebook, type it in or something. Uh, we only have a few folks here on our zoom but if you uh, if you're on let us know you're on amen all right can everybody hear me fine yes okay all right yes Good deal. Good deal. Um, I'm hoping everybody's on uh, or trying to get on. If not, uh, go remind somebody that church is on right now. And um, hopefully they'll get on real quick. All right. So just to kind of recap of what we talked about yesterday um, or last Wednesday, we began talking about the fruits of the Spirit. Now, uh, we didn't get too far in the fruits of the Spirit. We talked about the opposite of that. And what that, uh, what that all entails is the works of the flesh. We have to understand that works of the flesh um, are going to be those things that um, are um, stuff that we want stuff that we are um, wanting to do. Not always necessarily what the will of God is. Uh, the work of the, the flesh is how we respond uh, to sin. Or how do we respond uh, to temptations. So, um, can anybody uh, real quick uh, chime in and if you remember from last week, uh, just just FYI, if you are looking for scripture reference, we are Galatians 5 and starting at 16, going through 25. Um, so use that as a source there, but can somebody name some of the works of the flesh that we talked about last week? All right. Anybody? <laughs> it's a tough crowd tonight. All right. Okay. Well, let me start you out with one. Uncleanness, lewdness. Hatred, 
Drunkenness. There you go. Good to see you, Bree. Anybody else want to jump in? Okay. All right. So yeah, Bree, you I named a couple. You've named a couple. Um, so what are we looking at? We're looking at things that um, are our fleshly responses. So um, works of the flesh were was un uh, was adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry. Uh, sorcery, hatred, contention, um, jealousies, uh, wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, um, drunkenness, and many, many more. And so what Paul said in this which was very key to something that we talked about before. A lot of times we think that maybe this is just a list of bad things to do, but it's not just necessarily this list only. Because he, he will say in um, in verse uh, 21, uh, just as I told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. It, it, other uh, ways to look at that is there's a lot of other things that you can be doing. I've told you this before, and I'm telling you this again, that if you do any of such things, then um, you can't inherit the kingdom of God. That's a pretty tough indictment, that if I am doing these things, then I'm, I'm, I'm taking a chance. I'm taking a chance of missing out on heaven. Now, he um, would counter these uh, works of the flesh with the works of the Spirit. So, one of the things that we, uh, key ones that we looked at was some Greek words. Good to have you, Brother Bray. Um, fornication. Fornication's Greek word is pornea, which is where we get our word pornography uh, in the English. So that is something to think about that, yes, even though uh, fornication is uh, the act of, of sexual behavior outside of marriage, also think of what else it can be tied to. Um, sorcery. Now, we... Uh, we we also talked about that that the Greek word for that is uh, pharmakia, which is where we get our English word for pharmaceuticals or pharmacy. Um, so, in other words, even with sorcery, looking at the the way that that's translated, we can also look at that as being in drug abuse. Why does it why is it saying that? Because it's the use of drugs that. Um, alters your thinking now uh we also talked about that that it can't it don't necessarily have to be just drugs or pharmaceuticals anything that's altering your mind that is limiting your faith in god or what he uh desires for us so look at it like this um if i don't have any faith i know i don't please god that's scripture that's romans 8 and it talks about how that uh the mind uh, is the enemy of God. So if I have a carnal mind, then I am outside of the will of God. Now, being outside of the will of God, being faithless and our mind being carnal, like God can't heal, God can't touch, God won't do this, God can't do that, or it will never happen, even though God said it. Uh, scripture says that uh, God is true and every man is a liar. And we also know that it's, Jesus himself said that uh, the devil is the father of lies. So now if you think about it, if you're possessed, if you will, and I know I'm playing a little bit of words, but if you're possessed in your mind of, uh, I, I am, I have doubt or disbelief, then you are playing with, uh, a sort of sorcery or, or 
contra contradicting uh, thinking of the Word of God, if you will. Now, granted, also, that is anything that alters your mind, which goes back to our, our drug use and alcohol and, and even nicotine because it gives you a feeling of uh, euphoria and, and all of those things uh, because of that desire for it. So there's just a lot of things that we need to we looked at in the work, work of flesh. Outbursts of wrath. We, all, we talked about that. People will make you upset. So he's saying, we got to watch out what we do because everywhere I go, I have to be the ambassador of God. I got to be the ambassador of Christ. That means if somebody's talking about me, it doesn't give me a right to talk back about them. If somebody is uh, hurting uh, me or talking about my family or anything like that, it doesn't give me a right to act out in wrath. How do we do that? We can do a Facebook post. We can call them up and talk bad about them. We can go call a friend and gossip about them. There's a lot of things that we can do. And he's saying, this is something there that you cannot do or you can't inherit the kingdom of God. Just like uh, just like envy. Uh, uh, envy. Uh, Brother Stu, uh, uh, Sturgill, how you doing? Uh, uh, Sturgill, I'm sorry. Brother Sturgill, it's good to see you. Uh, good to see you, Elder. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, I'm glad to see you on. Um, but we we are looking at these things and heresies and envies and murders and drunkenness and all of these things. That's why we can't uh, we can't play with the works of the flesh. Well, that's not. I mean, yeah, I got upset, but it's not a it's not the biggest thing uh, that I could have ever done. Uh, no, no, no. Listen, <laughs> this. Uh, amen. Um, so uh, uh, we cannot uh, we cannot flirt with the works of the flesh. We cannot work. Uh, we cannot flirt with those things because uh, when we flirt with those things, those things are what's going to keep us from making it. And so I cannot um, allow those things to happen. So. We saw the pattern from above. Uh, we saw the pattern that I talked about last week. That's just a, a quick um, a recap of that. Um, so, if you're looking at the works of the uh, flesh, you can be um, you can understand that a lot of these things are happening today. Every time I turn around or look at the news or all of that, we're seeing what the works of the flesh are. Matter of fact, um, we can go to work and see the works of the flesh. We can go to the grocery store and see the works of the flesh. Um, you go and see somebody um, standing in uh, line uh, at the grocery and didn't get their correct change or didn't like uh, how the person looked at them or something. You can see the work of the flesh acting. Now, church folks, that should not ever be us. Somebody say amen. That should never, that should never be us. Because everywhere we go, somebody's watching us. And when you're an ambassador uh, uh, for Christ... Uh, that means you're the representation of him. Uh, yeah, but I'm not I'm not Jesus, so he understands. Oh, yeah, he understands. Thank God for his grace and mercy. But you can't go out of your way and you can't be uh, you can't be the guy that's always in a bad mood, looking mad at the world, trying to be mean to everybody all the time or have a haughty look at yourself because you're saved and all this stuff. That is going to keep you from the kingdom of God. But this this is what's going to keep you saved. Amen? And so, uh, what does uh, he say in Galatians 5, 22? All right, let's read it. Uh, this is the New King James Version. Amen? It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is joy, or I'm sorry, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. 
against there is no law. Such there is no law. And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. I, I, I like that. I like how that is worded. We have crucified the flesh, right? The works of the flesh, we crucified them um, with its passions and desires. What does that mean? That's exactly uh, the whole point of the flesh, the work of the flesh. It's what I desire. It's what I want. It's what my passion is. And if I have passion, uh, my passion in the wrong things, then I am uplifting what my desires are or what my will is or what I want to see. I, 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 everything is I, I, I. When you are doing the things of the flesh, it is what your flesh desires and what your flesh has passion for. Now that is not wrong with having desires and passions, but if they they have to be godly passions and godly desires, not anything that will self promote, not anything that's going to elevate yourself, not to not to say that you shouldn't uh, work um, work hard for things in life, uh, work hard for the for things. I believe that God will bless uh, people. Uh, that will work hard. That will look. Um, that will look to uh, uh, doing the things of God. At the same time, God will bless those that are able to be a blessing. Uh, my chat window is not moving up, uh, so it's good to see. I'm gonna catch up real quick. Good to see you, sister, uh, uh, sister Anna. Uh, and, and Sister uh, Heather and, and all of those that are on uh, our chat as well. Uh, so, again, what do we do? He says, you crucify the flesh. Those who are Christ's, those that are the possession of Christ. Think about that. The Bible says that we are not our own. We are Christ's. Paul said, I've espoused you as a chaste virgin unto Christ. Um, uh, there are so many scriptures that tells us that know ye not you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit lives in you and you can't have an, a filthy temple. Um, do we understand that that there are a lot of things that if you don't have the Spirit of God in you, you're none of His. Think about it. This flesh is corrupt. This flesh is corrupt. And that's why Scripture said it's important to have the Holy Ghost. Because if you don't have it, uh, your mortal body uh, cannot be raptured out of here. If the Spirit of the Lord, the same Spirit, that raised Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. We have to have that in us. If we don't have that in us and we're working and operating in the work of the flesh, then guess what? Can't inherit the kingdom of God. Can't inherit the kingdom of God. That's what he means. Um, so um, he also said that, that, that if you are Christ and you are a possession of Christ, then that means uh, 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 that I'm his. I don't. I don't get. I don't have a right to 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 go do what I want to because I'm his. Matter of fact, to even prove that, if you have repented of your sins, been baptized in his name, and filled with the Holy Ghost, then you are one of his. Scripture said that he purchased you with his own blood. He bought you. You are bought with a price. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. When he saw you, he chose you out of everybody out there. We have been chosen. We have been called. We have been filled. He called us because he knew we could do it. He knew that we could be an example. He knew that we would be the best ambassadors. Think about that. 
We're the ambassadors of Christ. Not everybody gets to be an ambassador. But he calls you to be the ambassador. He chooses you. Okay, I, they can try, they can try, but they, I'm choosing them because these are the ones that I know are going to represent me right. Now, here's the rules and stipulations. Here's the pamphlet on how we are to be a, 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 an example of, uh, of Christ. This is the pamphlet on how you're ambassadors. This is the, the pamphlet on how you're consistently writing that epistle because we're epistles to this world. People are reading us. People are watching us. And if we're not careful, we start doing things about us, then people are going to be able to read us. And God forbid, if they read us, you know what they're doing? They're going to see how corruptible this flesh is. They're going to see how selfish we are. They're, they're going to see how uh, self-centered we are. Again, I want to I want to requote uh, quote again what Brother Hendricks uh, Hendricks said last week in our sectional conference is that um, he used to pray, uh, Father, help me again uh, with uh, envy, help me with uh, pride, help me with this. And he said over the years I realized I had to change my prayer, Father. Pray for me, or Father, help me because I have pride. Help me because I have envy. Help me because I have lust. Help me because we have to recognize this flesh right here is corruptible. We are no good. Only Christ is good. And he bought us with a price. And if we do the things of the flesh, then that means that we're going to act out in the flesh. And when we act out in the flesh, we're going to act out in our own accord and we are not going to represent Christ. Hey! Good to see you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I miss you guys. It was so good to see y'all Monday. Um, I'm just saying the kids might not like you, but every once in a while, jump in on the OUF and, and just check them out and say hi to them. Now. That's right. That's now. Right. Jump in and check on your kids. They might have some pictures, though. And we don't appreciate that. However, I digress. Back to our Bible study. Anyways, so I got to be a good ambassador. Uh, Sister Bray, we talked about that recently, about the qualifications of being a U.S. ambassador. And uh, I'm kind of alluding to back to that, that, I mean, here we are. We're ambassadors of Christ. Here is the, here, here's the stuff you got to do. Or actually, here's the stuff you don't do as an ambassador. And if you want, if you please, just a little play on words here. If you want to be able to get into this embassy, you got to abide by the pamphlet here. If you've got if you've got issues in your life, I mean, I'm talking about if you've got adultery and fornication, cleanliness, idolatry, sorceries, hatred, you act out, you speak out all the time, you're always acting in wrath and hatred and jealousies and all this stuff, they're saying you're not an ambassador. You don't qualify. And you're not getting in. Now, there is a great uh, counter to everything that we have talked about. That's the fruits of the Spirit. He said, you've got the fruits of the Spirit. And the only people that have fruits of the Spirit, this is Paul's words here. If, he said, those that are Christ's, those that, that Christ possess, God Himself, Spirit, dwells within. We belong to Him. We sing about it. But when we truly belong to Him, He said, you will not do those things. Matter of fact, you have crucified the passions and desires of the flesh. So we've already talked about the passions and the desires of the flesh. Well, man, I've got troubles. I've got issues with these desires. I've got issues with this passion that I have. Again, remember, passion and desire in itself is not what's wrong. The passion and desires of what you are having uh, passion and what you are desiring after. First off. So we already covered that. So we're good there. Um, 
God will bless those, again, and I'll say it again, God will bless those that have their passions and desires in the right thing. God, Guess why God says he, he knows the desires of our heart. Amen? But there's twofold here. Our heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it but God? And if God has circumcised our heart and changed us and we have the fruits in us then he can give us the desires of our heart because our heart's in the right place amen and um so it's a heart issue too and the desires of the heart uh uh I say it all the time. Y'all know I say it all the time. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you've got some bad things to say all the time, you better check your heart. You better check your desire. You better check your passion. You better check your flesh. Because you're probably not living up as a good ambassador. Amen. All right. I think we've, 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 we've covered that very well there. Um, so we see some of the things that we've talked about above and uh, some of the Greek uh, I didn't cover all of them but a couple of the Greek words that essentially are what we translate things into today um, and it's kind of amazing that we are still doing those things the uh, Bible says nothing's new under the sun since that's the case uh, everything that they faced then they're going to be facing uh, today all right, here's how we can counter the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and meekness. Now, let's look at these words and break them down. Love. In this, in this portion of the fruits... Love, uh, the Greek word is, as we've heard this often, agape, agape love. That's brotherly love. That's that's uh, passionate love. That's uh, goodwill towards men. Amen. Right. Uh, love. I love this one. Love in action. In other words, this love that he's talking about is not saying, "Well, I love everybody." That's our great christian statement right it's okay we've all said it. it's all right um the the whole you know look i love everybody paul said that's good uh, good but the love i'm talking about is the love in action can you love them like I wrote, wrote about in uh, 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 Romans 12. Uh, yes, like, Pastor, you always talk about Romans 12. I have to because I got to read it all the time, Brother Bray. I got to read it all the time to remind me. Again, the pamphlet, the booklet, it's wrote. It, it's written for you. The SOP is right here. The map to get you to heaven, it's right here. And if you want to be good ambassadors, you got to go to the book. Sometimes I got to go back to the book and remind myself of something I already know. But sometimes it's just better to look at it. So yes, Romans 8, when it tells me that when my, when my enemy is hungry, I feed him. Don't ask him. Feed him. If he's cold, don't ask him. Give him my coat. That's love in action. What else is love in action? Um, what a lot of y'all have already done. Again, I can talk about our Thanksgiving dinner, uh, our da Thanksgiving uh, feed. That's love in action. The the Christmas ba baskets, love in action. Laundry love, that's love in action. And the soup kitchen. And unfortunately, we couldn't do it this week because of weather, but we're going to do that. That's love in action. That's more than just saying, hey, yeah, we do charity and we do a lot of good things. No, you've got to have love in action because to be an ambassador, you got to remember people are watching you. People are watching you. And if they're watching you, they want to see, are you what you say you are? Are you truly what you say you are? And I've got to be love in action. 
If I say that I want to help somebody, then I, I better I better start doing that uh, or do more of it. Um, so that's agape, um, agape love. So everybody, uh, jot that down in your mind or write it down somewhere. I've got to have love in action. Love in action. Next one is our joy. Joy is chara, which is uh, simply gladness, uh, exuberant peace, or a reason. Being exuberant peace. Think about that. I've got to have peace and, and gladness. How can I do that? The joy of the Lord is my strength. And if it's my strength, it's also my peace because I don't lean to myself or my own works of the flesh. I'm not, I'm not working in the passion and desire of my flesh. I can have joy even in the worst moments of my life. Have you, has anybody in here, has anybody in here, either yourself or seen people that you know they have been through all kinds of stuff, yet walk into church and praise God? Amen? Sister Bray? <laughs> but it's true. But it's true. So have I. Uh, uh, we've heard the testimony of Brother Tony, Sister Danielle, many others, many of you have testimonies. Sister Anna, you have such a very moving testimony uh, that you've told me and my wife uh, that, that uh, you know, out of all of the things you've been through, y'all can come to the church and say, you know what, God's still good. It doesn't mean that you're not going through something. It doesn't mean that you haven't cried any tears. We've been endured for the night, but joy comes in the morning why because he that endure to the end the same shall be saved they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength joy of the lord is my strength all of these things play together all these scriptures come together praise god i feel the holy ghost the reason why i feel the holy ghost is because i know that when i'm going through everything in this world and everything that can happen to me and you go through stuff the only reason why I can crawl myself up to that podium sometimes is because the joy of the Lord has given me strength to do it one more time. The only reason why you're able to get up one more day and say, I'm going to live it for the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. So I'm going to keep going because the joy of the Lord has given you enough strength to get up. I'm telling you, with this joy that we're talking about, it's not just saying, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing good. No, I'm doing great because today's the day the Lord made. Today is the day. He woke me up. Uh, Brother Tony said something uh, recently. Some of y'all might have to correct me on, on the quote here. But man, he gave you another day, another chance. You ought to be excited about having another chance. Another day to do something for him. So if I've got love in action, that's going to help. And I'm going to have joy. Now, remember, if I don't have joy, how am I going to really be able to show love? Come on now. Think about it. There you are, Anna. We see you now. Hey, Amen. So think about it. How <laughs> can you have, uh, Brother Bray, I'm going to show you love, but I'm going to be mad all the time. I love you, dude. I love you, Richard. God's good to you. Are you happy about anything? Life's dandy. No, that's not how it works. I've got the greatest thing on earth, and it's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That means if I'm, if I, and I'm sorry, but it means if I've got cancer, I can still thank God that He still loved me and saved me. That means that if everything wrong could happen, I lose my job tomorrow. I can still thank God because it's not, I can't put my trust and this right here, I can't put my trust in this. This right here is going to say worry, fear, what if, what if, but God, joy. That's why I've, I know some of your situations in life. And see you come to church every Sunday with your hands lifted, praising God. Uh, whether we have a full church or we only have a handful you still worship God you still are praising God you're still happy the joy is still there why I know what he's done for me 
you don't know like I know, like the old song says, what he's done for me. If you only knew what he'd done for me, uh, you would understand why I'm smiling today. You'll understand why I'm able to get on that platform and sing one more song. You'll understand why I'll be able to teach one more adult lesson. You'll understand why I'll be able to lead service one more day. You'll understand why I can lead pre-service prayer because you just don't know. The joy of God that's within me has helped me. There's a little kid song. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Amen. That's when he gives you the desires of your heart. When you got that joy. When you got the right stuff in there. Amen. I'm only on two of them. Amen. All right. All right. Next, we have peace. Peace. And, 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 when he what he's referring to at having peace now th- remember i've already said that that the, the the joy of the lord is our strength and oh hold on a second hold on just a second somebody can help with that there you go i'm giving it over to the tech guy um so um it all notice it all plays together love joy peace amen uh tranquility harmony security i can go to sleep at night because i feel secure i can i can go to sleep at night uh brother brian because i feel safe and why do I feel safe? Why do I have peace? Why am I secure? Matter of fact, I'm, I didn't read the whole definition. The rest of it says rest, quietness, safety. Many of you have said coming to church that now you feel a place of safety. She tell you about that. You can't get that anywhere else. And you know what? Even if the church fails you, if you've got the the fruits of the Spirit in you, you can still rest at night and have peace and security. Because I know there might be some things going on. I know there might be folks out there. I know that things ain't right or everything else is turned upside down in my life. But thank God... I've got a smile on my face. I got joy and I have the ability to love those who falsely accuse me. Love those in action. Those that have talked about me. I can truly love those because he gave me peace to do it. See, if I've got security in God, that means that... Have you ever met somebody who's just really confident and secure in themselves? That you can't say nothing to them. Look, I'm confident in me. You know, like a guy wearing a, a, a pink shirt. Psh, you can say what you want to, man. I'm all man. This, you know, uh, real men wear pink, if you will. You know, uh, uh, I, I, that don't ruin my confidence. Man, think about it. Uh, men, women of God. People can say, you ain't called. Psh, you can say what you want to. I'm confident in my calling. I can, I got peace of mind that I am in the safety and in the net of the will of God. And if I'm in the will of God, you can't tell me I'm not. And you can't tell me I don't have peace. You can't tell me I ain't got no strength. You can't tell me I shouldn't be happy. Go ahead, Sister Bray. It's not a fully developed thought just yet, but it's coming to my head. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I was thinking about, I don't know, I was asking Chauncey, like, why, why in that order? Like why that order, like love, joy, and obviously love is you know the most important commandment. So obviously love will go first. Yeah. But then I was thinking about just like what man needs physically, mm-hmm. and you have the hierarchy of need where you have the um, uh, physiological physiological needs, uh, safety needs, social needs, esteem mm-hmm. needs, and then you finally reach that place of self actualization. And so when you kind of look at the different fruits, you kind of see, oh, okay. You know, when you mentioned safety yeah. with the peace, I was like, oh, okay, the peace goes in that category. That's like one of the next stages. And then socially, what do you need? That goodness, that good, you know, that attitude, that gentle 
nature that helps your social, you know, yes, you meet those social needs. It's it's, am, then, it's amazing. They write psychology books on this stuff, and Jesus already yeah. had it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I think I think that's amazing. I think that the uh, you know, wow. like you're saying, it's so important to have these fruits of the spirit. You know, if we're going to be on the authentic church, the authentic body that's of it. Christ, we have to have his characteristics. That's right. And this is his character. You know, mm-hmm. his character is love. His character is joy. You know, and this, and you were talking about joy, just real quick, then I'll be quiet. But mm-hmm. you're talking about joy, and the difference between joy and happiness. Is that it's not simply a state of mind, but it's a way of life. Yeah. Like it's you live, breathe everything in a joyful manner. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Nothing can nothing that can happen around you can affect the joy because joy is an internal uh or an external expression of an inward experience. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like it's happening on the inside of me, so I'm gonna express it on the outside no matter what's going on around me. That's and right. The same thing can be said about peace. Yeah. Wow, I look at it like um with the with the it's spiritual. Yeah, and we see you, Sister Anna. We love you, Sister. It's spiritual. You can't. It's not a natural thing. A lot of times we mistake happiness for joy, and it's spiritual. And I look at it like adrenaline. Mm-hmm. Like you know when your yep. when your body's you know is in danger, that adrenaline mm-hmm. kicks, um, kicks in. But spiritually, when you're in danger, that peace kicks in, that joy well, kicks in. That you know. When you go that route, let's think about it. I just got through doing uh, anatomy and physiology, and we and we covered extensively on mental health part of it, where it was talking about like why do people go to drugs and, and why do people uh, because it releases those endorphins, it releases those things, those things that make you feel joy and peace. Like you can conquer the world on some of these drugs, but it runs out. Even your own body only produces so much. You can have fight or flight. But it only lasts so long. There comes a point where that it runs out. Woo. But out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water when you get the Holy Ghost. It doesn't run out. It keeps going. It is your lifestyle. Man, why is that dude always happy? Because I've got an abundance of joy. Zuberant peace of mind. I've got harmony. I've got security. I got love because when you got it's overflowing. It's part of having the spirit of God. Man, that's that, that's wonderful. And, and Sister Bray, you're you're absolutely correct. There's a lot of these things that's in order. And matter of fact, we're going to talk a little bit more in detail on that over, over the next period because there these are all counter uh, uh, contraindications to the works of the flesh. Um, okay. What time is it? Okay. So I really want to get through them all. So, so long suffering, long suffering, patience, consistency. I did something. <laughs> uh, patience, consistency, steadfastness perseverance slowness in avenging wrongs whoa that's number four that's number four and think about it you're righteous or brave you got to have that love you got to have that joy you got to have that peace you got to have these things or it's going to be really hard to have patience with somebody it's going to be really hard to be consistent it's going to be really hard to show that slowness to to getting revenge, and so um, uh, these are all counteractions. Counteractions. Uh, next, gentleness. That's uh, that actually the 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 definition in this term and in gentleness, integrity, kindness, careful. And morally good. So, if you're morally good, you have integrity. That means that people can trust what you say, what you're doing. If you said you did something, then people can believe that. They can trust in that. And if people never see it, you'll still do the right thing and still uh, have that inca- uh, integrity. You'll still have that 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 moral good in you 
when nobody's ready to take a picture, when nobody's ready to post it on social media, when you're not going to be on the news or called up to the front to get that attaboy. He said, you'll still have it if you have the fruits of the Spirit in you. You'll still have that if nobody recognizes it. You'll still have it. Goodness. An upright in heart and act kind. Doing good, especially to others. So that goes right back into our agape love. But this is another element of that agape love. If you love people in action, then you'll have goodness in action. In other words, your heart's going to be good because it's going to be in the right place. It's going to be at the right desires, the right passion. I desire to see people saved. I desire to see people fed. I desire to see people come off drugs and alcohol. If I have that agape love, I put that in action by reaching the and in that reaching them, I've also got to present the, the goodness and the kindness that comes along with that. Jesus loved a lot of sinners. Matter of fact, He loved us. And we were all sinners. He said He died for us while we were yet sinners. So He would see the most outcast people and eat with them. Love them. Care for them not judge them, not put them in a certain box or a category. And even those that were wicked towards him, he still loved them. I, I mention it quite often, but but the guy that was getting ready to arrest him, Jesus still healed him. He had enough brotherly love. He had enough gentleness, joy, peace, love that the guy that was getting ready to beat him and persecute him and put him in shackles, he healed him. That's, that's, that's that goodness. Faith. Faith. Again, without faith, no man can please him. You don't have faith. That's your, remember, uh, sorcery, uh, uh, pharmacia, uh, which uh, is talking kind of like uh, uh, mind altering, if you will. Well, in a spiritual sense, if you are carnally minded, your mind is all altered to the will of God. What happens when you are carnally minded? You begin to lose faith in God. You begin to lose faith that God can, faith that God will, faith that God should. Amen. So, Deja said, uh, uh, feeding the homeless without expectation of praise versus uh, making a, a YouTube video to show you giving a homeless man a thousand bucks and flashing how much you do uh, for them instead of letting God use you in the darkness. That is correct. That's it. That's it. Thank you for that. So, faith is obedient to truth. Believing. Steadfast. Man, there's that, there's that again. It's like that steadfast. Long-suffering. Steadfastness. Faith. Steadfast. In other words, God called me to do something. But everything has gotten in the way. But I'm still going to keep walking in it. I'm still going to have faith. And I'm still going to believe. Or, I know God has promised to heal. But I'm still sick today. But I'm still going to walk in it. I'm still going to believe it. Or, my family member that I've been praying for. My husband or my wife or my, my kids that I've been praying for. God's telling me to keep pressing because they will come back to you. Or they will get saved steadfastness faith I am going to believe and trust that's the big T word that is so hard trust being steadfast means that I have to trust that what God told me is going to happen but everything else is saying that it's not do you trust me can you trust me can you have enough faith to trust the process, trust the long-suffering that comes along with it, 
Joseph, you're going to be the big chief. You're going to be the one that people are going to serve you. You're going to be the one where you're going to have everything at, at the mention of your word. But you're going to have to endure some long suffering first. You're going to have to have some faith first. Believe me while we go. Will you still believe me while we're going through it? While you're going through it. That's faith. Meekness. Being mild and gentle. I, I work in a in a profession, Brother Bray, you work in a profession that, man, we are a bunch of dudes that we we alphas. You know, we don't want to be meek. We don't we don't want to be gentle. You're on a fire scene and you see something happening. I mean, I want to put my boot in somebody, you know, say, hey, come on, man, make sense. You're you're out there doing what you're doing as a soldier, you know. Um, so that's stuff that I've got to always remember. I gotta be meek. I've gotta have I gotta be gentle. I gotta be kind. Because there are going to be folks that are going to do some stuff or do things wrong or treat you a certain way. How do you respond to that? How do you respond to that? My, my, my flesh, its passion and desire says, hit them, get them, take them to the back, yell at them, insult them, remind them of everything they've done wrong. Remind them of everything they've done wrong to you. That's the passion and desire of this right here. But how do you counter it? I don't like this. Man, fruits of the Spirit, we don't like it. If we really dive into it. Because it says, i got to be meek. i got to be kind. i got to be mild. That doesn't say you're a pushover. But there is a Christian way, a Holy Ghost filled Christian way of handling anything. And that is not always easy. Well, I love, I love this other, oh wow, I love this other definition. A self conquered ego meekness. I'll give y'all a second to think. I've got an ego. You've got an ego. We've all got egos. Right. All of us. <laughs> if Sister Miller was standing right here, I would be doing the same thing. Um, no. I've got an ego. You got. I don't like things that don't happen the way that I want it. Or the way I want it to. I don't like it when things go. Uh, uh, it, it goes outside of my expectation. Or people act outside of my expect. What I expect. Or how they should do things. But if I can. Conquer my ego. Or when I have received correction. I've got to be able to receive that. But if I ain't conquered my ego, I'm not going to like what you have to tell me. You're not going to like what is being told to you. And lastly, not considering oneself. That's our that's 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 meekness. Back to Romans 12. Oh, praise God, Sister Anna. I feel the Holy Ghost too. That's why I'm I'm getting fired up over here. Amen. Matter of fact, Brian, where's our chat at? There we go. There we go. Oh, I'm missing so much. All right, Mr. Producer, you need to you need to pay attention to our, our chat here. There we go. <laughs> All right, no, I'm just playing. But no, yes. I feel the Holy Ghost too because not only do I feel the Holy Ghost, folks, I'm going to be on transparent right here. I not only feel the Holy Ghost, I feel the conviction of the Holy Ghost. The fruits of the Spirit should do that to you. Because when you start really diving into these fruits of the Spirit, it should convict you like, ooh, wait a minute, I need to... F I, I'm not living up. Excuse me. I'm not living up to everything maybe. Or maybe there, maybe I am, but I could do a lot better. Amen. Because... It seems to me, 
I just love the way Paul writes it. He 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 counter he starts out with the works of the flesh, which is everything we've been talking about, everything we struggle with. And he said, "Now here's your counter. Here's your remedy." And then we look at it and it does something to your flesh cuz your flesh don't like it. Ugh, I don't I don't want to be meek when people are wrong. I don't want to be gentle when somebody is being rude or looking at me wrong way. You know why you feel that way? Because your flesh hates it. Anything that is in of the flesh is contrary to God. Romans 8 tells us that much. That if you walk in the flesh, you're going to do exactly what the flesh wants. But if you walk in the Spirit, you're going to do the mind things of the Spirit. That's everything. That's why we got to have these fruits. And yes, as much as my flesh hates it, that's good. My flesh should hate it. My flesh should not like it. My flesh doesn't want it. That's why we fast. That's why we pray. Because our flesh doesn't like it. I've got to get rid of this old man of filth and and fleshliness. And Paul said, this is how you do it. Exercise some meekness. And then, self-control. Self-control. I think a lot of times we can conquer a lot of things. But sometimes our biggest enemy... I see you, Sister Bray. I see you. Let me let me make this point, and, I, and I'll turn it over to you. Sometimes we have the we have a hard time conquering our self control. I've got to I got to have that last word, or I got to say it, or I got to do it. I got to. We don't have, and and it says control of one's passion. <laughs> wow, it's the last one. And he said, "Those that are Christ's." have crucified their passion and desires. And self-control's definition is controlling of one's passions and desires. Think about it. It's last because ultimately, if I can't get this flesh under control, I, I surely appreciate that, Elder. Uh, again, so glad to have you with us, Brother Sturgill. Amen. If if I can't control this, if I can't control this, there's no way that I can do everything else. And the only way that I can do this, the only way that I can control, I've got to have that Spirit in me. And he said, any of these things, such, you got to, this is how you're going to handle it. Sister Bray, go ahead. Uh, well, two quick points now. Um, jumping off what you just said. Um, I love how God is like, hey, first, first and foremost, focus on just loving me. Mm -hmm. You know, like focus on loving me first. Like, let's just establish a relationship. Yes. And I love how the, the self-control is last because that's one of the hardest ones. Oh, my oh, goodness. Time. Oh my Doesn't goodness. matter how long you've been saved, it's one of the hardest ones. But you see how God is understanding. Uh huh. So when we first give our lives over to Christ and we had those moments where maybe we didn't exercise self control or maybe we didn't exercise gentleness or goodness, right. realizing, wait a minute, God is asking me first and foremost to love him. Right. Like as I love him, then it's gonna develop the joy in me, then the peace. And, yes. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna it's gonna grow. And so I thank God that he's you're breaking this down and we're seeing like yes. don't be so hard on yourself. Like just focus on loving God and everything else is going to fall into place for one. Because if you love God, if you love God, you'll have the attributes of God. Simple, simple scripture. God is love. That's right. That's it. If you have, if you have him, it helps you have build that relationship, and it helps you get that love. How can you love somebody who's done you wrong? Hey. But we see people do it all the time. People that that they know, we know people have been hurt by folks, and yet they still yeah. forgive them and still love them. It's 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 like a marriage. It's like a marriage. Like I'm thinking about loving him, like. I wake up with joy. You know what I'm saying? I have a peace. Peace. When he's home, when he's gone, I can't sleep at night. It's hard. Yeah. He's home. I have peace. 
you have you security. Know like that comes from that. You know, that's and it's the same thing with, with guys. Like those things will develop as you yes. learn to establish, you know, that connection with them. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. it doesn't mean that you don't love them if you if you struggle with your, your faith and but maybe just some more time. Yes. <laughs> Some more one-on-one time yes, Absolutely. You know? Well, you and, know? And, that's, and that's what he was saying. Uh, you know, Paul was saying, look, look, this is who we are, works of the flesh. This, this is, this is right. nature. This is man's nature. Yeah. Uh, he has mentioned this is all of us. This is where we are. And this is how we counter it. When we have the Spirit of God in us, this is how we're going to overcome it. Now, right. I, I said this last week, but does this mean that you get... Filled with the Holy Ghost today, tomorrow you possess everything here. Now you'll have a lot of it because you got zeal, you got excitement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But over time, people wear on you. Circumstances wear on you. Situations happen. Ask the Ashleys. You know, get in church on fire for God. House catches on fire. Life event happens, and still live for God. Now right. it was a struggle at times. You've been there too. I've been there too. Everyone here that's listening and watching has been there too. And yeah. it has been a building block of getting there. Um, because but it's like it's like when you when you find something you really love and they treat you really good, it's like no matter who doesn't treat you good, you'll still love them. Yeah. No matter who doesn't treat you right, who lies on you, you still blesses them, bless them. You still pray for them because you're like, I'm so fulfilled. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, with God that even if you don't love me, I'm, I'm so loved at home. Like God loves me. I'm good. Like, there's, there's something about it. There's something about that connection with Sister, him, you know, I'm about to admit something. And I know my wife is on her. This so might give you some kudo points, but this is the truth. This is the truth. And what you're saying is absolutely true. Look, I'll go ahead. Now, here's my ego, right? Now, I'm a grown man, you know. I'm a grown man, but I'll tell you what. If they treat me bad at work or I had a really rough day or I had a really rough wreck or death or something that I had to do, you know who I think about, Sister, Sister Bray? Other than praying to God, I just want to get to my wife and just hug her because I got comfort in that. And sometimes I do. Sometimes you don't even know why, you know, because I hug her every, all the time. Most most time when I come and see her, I either get a hug or a kiss, something like that. But then there are some days I just hug her just a little bit longer because yeah. I can see so many things out there or I can huh. be faced with so many things out there on the streets in my job. But there's something about knowing that my wife is there, my children are there. I can hug her. And and I say my wife the most because I think about my children. I do. I do. I think about my children. And especially uh, depending on what the calls are and stuff like that, I think about children. But there's something about like, but I can't hug or have that same emotion with my kids that I have with her. Yeah, and that's that, why that God... Yeah, that love is reciprocated. You know, yes. it's it's returned with the same intensity when it's your spouse. You know, our kids love us. Yeah, but they don't love us like our spouse. Right. You know, like I know all my kids love me, but they don't love me like Sushanta love me. You know. Well, look at it like this. We, look at it like I'm sorry. Look at it like this. J Jesus said, "I will never leave you, never forsake you. I'll be there to the very end. Right till death do us part. I'm going to be there." My kids love me today, but they're going to grow up and then they're going to find their own spouse. They're going to leave their mother and father, cleave to their husband and wife. They're going to cleave together and become one. There's going to be some days that they're going to put me and mama off because mm -hmm. wife or husband said, let's stay home today. That's right. Come on now. Yeah, when man. you got that look, see... My kids are going to leave one day. They're going to get married. They're going to have their own kids. They're going to be gone. They're going to build that, their own relationship. Mm -hmm. My relationship with my wife, I have a fit. We've been married. We'll be married 22 years in July. And it's got stronger and stronger and stronger as the years go by. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about it. Uh, long suffering gentleness meekness one of right. us had to had to do that to each other or we wouldn't be here today 
Yeah. You don't have those that are married that's been married for a significant time. Brother Sturgill, uh, I know you and Sister Sturgill have been, you know, th that was a long, long marriage. Hey, why? Ain't just because you saved. There's a love there. And it starts with what you said, Sister Bray. That relationship that first started, and that's how we're able to build. That's why I can exercise self-control when somebody else presents me of a false love. I can exercise self-control. When I get tempted or when the devil tempts us, if I'm really in love, there ain't no temptation that's going to pull me away from that. Matter of fact, it makes me want to run to the arms of my wife. When the devil begins to tempt you, he said, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. He ain't got time for you. He'll go find somebody else that'll cheat. You know, uh, or or he said, uh, what did he say? Flee fornication, if you will. Sin, that's fornication against God, if you will. You know, you are a spouse to Christ. And if you're flirting around with things of the world or things that the enemy's throwing at you, he said, you better beat feet, get out of there, run back to the arms of your love, your first true love. When you get there, you'll get that comfort. That's where that peace, joy, that security, that long suffering, that gentleness, all of that comes into play. That's the fruits of the Spirit. Man, I wish we could keep... Man, it's 15 after. I didn't realize what time it was. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, so I'm going to stop it right here. I'm going to stop right here because what I want to get into is the more, more, even more, uh, 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 more scriptures and more things that are going to talk about these fruits. One of those things that I want to talk about uh, coming up is they will know you by your fruits. Uh, I, I said somebody I, last week. I used the analogy of peach trees. Look, I love being. A, I love peaches. I love. I've got a peach tree out there, and Sister Bray, it goes right back to what you're saying. The process. It's been. It's been in the ground for three years now. This is this year. It should have more peaches than it had last year. The first year it had no peaches, I think, or it had the baby peaches, but those are false. They can't even produce seed. But the 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 amen they can't pr produce seed but then the next year the fruit begins to mature that tree matures that fruit even if it's just one or two each one of those have a seed that can produce a tree that can produce more seed three the third year i should have an abundance of fruit on my tree amen that mean i should have an abundance of seed i should be able to i should and one seed, it only takes one seed to produce a tree that will produce another hundred seeds. That's why God said, He's going to know you by your fruits. If you're a nut, and some of us might be nuts, but He's going to know if you're a nut tree or if you're a fruit tree. They're going to know. The people are going to know. And it might be spring, and it might be just blooms on that tree. And we're going to get to this next time. Blooms on that tree. And they might look similar. A peach sometimes peach blooms can look similar to an apple bloom. And this person could say all day, that's a peach tree right there. That's a peach tree right there. That's a peach especially somebody who don't know any better. That's a peach tree. And they can argue back and forth. No, that's an apple tree. No, that's a peach tree. No, that's an apple tree. Well, we'll see. Because in May, the real fruit will manifest itself. People will always know. And also the seasons. Hey, yeah. You struggle to get just the two fruit on your tree last year. But if you keep going and keep working on these fruits, you're going to start producing more fruit. You're going to start producing more and more. Brother Sturgeon, we absolutely will let you know when we come back on. Thank you. Thank you again, Elder. Um, We'll be producing more fruit, more fruit. But I'm gonna close it right there because we're gonna we're gonna jump into what we're talking about next time. Um, thank you all. Now I'm gonna open up the mic to anybody or the chat. So if anybody has anything you want to add or say, or please put it in the chat or vo vocalize it um, for the next uh, uh, next five five or so minutes, so we can let everybody. There we go. I gotta work up. I gotta wake up super early. I gotta wake up super early, Sister Bray. I don't know what you're saying, but I'm giving you. I'm giving you my excuse. Yeah. <laughs> but 
Tell her to tell me to wait first. He said, don't <laughs> jump in yet. So I'm going to wait. I know. She uh, took up like everybody else. Wow, I did that. Like, give, it, give other people a chance. Hey, I'll sis, wait. Where, where, where is that? Um, no, I'm not going to. I'm playing. <laughs> I'm not gonna throw no fruit at you. <laughs> All right. Anybody got anything you want to say, Sister, Sister Andy? You got anything, Sister Miller, Richard? First lady, right? I'm good. Oh, that's what she had to say. Be quiet. See, let me meet this mic again. Okay, okay. I'll stop. Randy, say something else. I haven't heard your beautiful voice in like weeks. 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 I miss you guys. Oh, we miss you, Sister Anna. Yes, we miss, we miss you. <laughs> I miss all of you. No. Yeah. Seeing this snow will be over, we'll be back sure. Hopefully Sunday. I'm counting on it. I'm counting on it. The ladies are going to do awesome. They're going to do great. So excited. Excited about it. Well, okay, I waited 30 seconds. Okay. I'll, I'll this. All right, go ahead, Sister Bray. No, Randy, I'm Wait, my Sister Miller, you going to say something? Oh, sorry. I thought I was unmuted. Um, Brianna just came in here and used some of the ladies saying, and I was like, that includes you. And she was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what did I mean? I can't deal with her. She is a lady. <laughs> wait, no, I'm not. <laughs> yes, you are. You're like, what, you a dude? 20. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak. <laughs> I'll be mute Sunday. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Well, let's see what what fruit can I throw at you? For now on, that's what we need to do, brother Bray. Throw fruit at people. We're gonna start that's throwing fruit at people. Oh, hey, what what what? When people do something we don't like, we're like, boo! Here's some fruit. <laughs> don't love that. Uh, oh, oh so you love. ain't got no love. Here's some fruit. Here's some love. Here's some love. Uh, uh, <laughs> Go ahead, okay, I'll say this. She's a banana, so that's funny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, I will say this, though. Um, I thank God for this uh, Bible study. It was definitely encouraging. Amen. Amen. I appreciate it. Um, I think that um, um, maybe in the future, if we can maybe expound a little bit more on some of the fruits that we kind of overlook. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain fruits that we kind of we understand. It's like, oh, man, I understand love. I understand joy. But it's those, it's those fruits like goodness and gentleness that we don't really you know we kind of read that fast and keep going <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean and meekness too and I thought tonight was like one of the first time you really not, not just you but you broke it down more so it's kind of like these fruits are important too yes. but I think that sometimes people don't um, utilize those fruits is because they don't understand it and they're yeah. kind of mm -hmm. afraid to ask about it Makes sense. and so you see a lot of us Christians walking around looking all mean and harsh we don't really know about gentleness. We never really studied it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we lack some of that integrity because we never really studied it in depth. So I think that there's some fruits that we maybe need to um, elaborate more on right. so that we can start seeing that in um, you know each other. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. And I believe that's why the Lord, because, again, authentic Christians, right? what we were talking about, Brother Bray, uh, he said at the beginning as well, I mean, we say we're going to be authentic. Well, this is how you're authentic as well. Amen. You know? Amen. I, and also, I, I was real quick, I wanted to say, uh, you were so when you're talking about love, when you started off, you're talking about the different forms of love. The one thing that was consistent that you, you were saying is uh, the love that, that we need to have, the, the love that's part of the fruits of the Spirit is action. Yes. It's an action uh, or an active uh uh, characteristic. It's not something that's passive. It's not something that you know you just talk about. It's something that's active. And I think the reason why that's important is because if love is active, then every other fruit is active as well. So we can say we have peace, but you have to live and walk and show that you have peace. Or you say that you have patience, you have to show that you have patience, so on and so forth. So I thought that was a good point. Speaking yeah. of how it's active. And if love is active, then everything else has to be active as well. Absolutely. Love leads by example. Yes. Mm. That's good. That's good. And that's absolutely correct. I mean, love and action. Wow, that, that, that's a great, excellent point. I mean, the action is, you know, if I got love and action, then I'm going to possess all those things. I'm going to act out in those other fruits. Right. Richard, you got anything? 
I know I seen that you had some. What did you say? You had some long suffering. Oh, it's been it's been some tough. <laughs> Has Heather thrown a, thrown a pineapple at you? It's all right, bro. You can let us know. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead, brother Richard. Going once. Not yet. Okay. All right. Sister Danielle, you have anything? All right. Sister Anna, talk to us about, about what you think about tonight, you know, the fruits. Everybody's good. About, to, go ahead. About throwing fruits? Oh, no. <laughs> we'll give everybody a chance. We're just studying it, so we're not throwing fruits today. Well, I thought it was awesome. Oh, yeah. I, I, I found it educational. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so thankful. And it's hard. It, the fact is, it is hard uh, at times. But... Um, when we have that spirit in us, it allows us to be able to have that strength to do all the things. Um, and so when I study this myself, I'm like, wow, ouch. That's, I mean, that's every day I've got to deal with this. And, and I learned a lot in teaching, in teaching this. You can turn your, turn your microphone, Sister Bro, you got something to say? <laughs> it's not that hard though yeah it's not that hard because all you need is water and sunlight and soil that's, that's it. it all you need to do is just stay planted where god has you just stay planted where he has you placed you have to have the death and then, the burial and, just, and resurrection that's it and everything else will just come after that. Just stay where God has you planted and yeah. allow you to be watered continuously and just bask in his presence. That's legit all you have to do. Yep. That's so, it. Yeah. Whew. That's all I want to say. Okay. Good job. I'm your mic. This is good stuff. Good stuff today. Uh, well, again, I'm so thankful that everybody jumped on. Uh, I know this is, we always have a good time doing these, um, but ain't nothing like being together. And I I miss you guys. I really do. And um, I'm really excited about what's coming up this weekend. Um, as far as the men's thing's concerned, we'll let you know. Uh, but ladies, as far as the weather's concerned, we should be able to have church on Sunday with no issues. Uh, temperatures actually supposed to rise so uh, between saturday and sunday thank god so so ladies yeah be ready be ready and yes sister deja we miss we, and sister anna we, we miss everybody we miss everybody um so be ready get your dancing shoes on Get your shouting shoes on. Get your amens on. Because I feel like God is really going to do... You know, God always going to show out when we get to come back together again like that. I mean, imagine this. We feel the Holy Ghost. I felt the Holy Ghost Sunday when Brother James was preaching. And we feel the Holy... Wonderful job, didn't he, y'all? Let me tell you, that dude preached. That dude preached. Great that job. Man. Okay. Yeah. All right. Preach. Yeah. <laughs> I called him afterwards. I said, dude, you straight up preached. You'd shout, yeah, but you always cover that wig up with a hat. So, you know how to take the hat off, Sister Deja? Am I not supposed to say that? <laughs> God help. Somebody say, God, somebody pray for you, Pastor. I miss y'all. I just haven't seen y'all. Right. Uh, Throw some fruit at him, y'all. <laughs> not, not, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, but no, seriously, uh, get your amens. Right <laughs> <laughs> it is so hot. 
Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I need some more. Di- I, I the the more diverse our church gets, I, I need some more diversity mic. training, I guess. Is that right? <laughs> I tried to keep the mic muted. We were doing so well. Brother, you tried. Oh, you tried. <laughs> Oh Lord of mercy! We we now we're losing it. Now we're losing it. <laughs> uh, I'm ready. I'm just excited to be, see y'all again. I really am excited to see everybody yeah. again, and let's have a church, man. I'm just excited. I miss it. I, anytime we have to miss church, I just absolutely miss it. And amen. And I'm ready for it. So I, I know, I know it's gonna be good because you trying to the no, no, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because I'm gonna ask I know you three. Be good. I know it's gonna be good because the devil has. I don't know about first lady or um. Rihanna or whoever on um, Danielle, but I know the devil's been attacking this week, like attacking me this week and trying to throw me off. And I'm like, okay, all right, Lord's been good, mm-hmm. left and right. I just know God's going to bless, and um, I'm excited for what God's going to do. Man, Man. I am too. Amongst all of our, our women. Yeah. Well, and with that being said, Sister Bray, dismiss us in a word of prayer. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this awesome Bible study on tonight, Father God. We yes, thank you, Lord. Lord, for all those who are in attendance on tonight, Father God, whether in Zoom you, or Jesus. through Facebook, Father God. And we ask you, Lord, to continue to just bless um, Revival Church, God. Bless those who are listening as well, Lord. Father God. Yeah. Let us uh, grow and, and cultivate the fruits of the Spirit, Father God. And not only grow those fruits, Father God, but actually uh, exercise as the fruit of the Spirit, Father God. Demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit, Father God. And so seeds of love, Father God, to those who we come across, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for helping us and um, showing us how to become authentic believers, Father God. Amen. Yes, Lord. We love you today, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, that you are molding us into real, true believers, Father God. We give you all the praise on today, Father God, all the honor, Lord, all the glory, Father God. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, just to have your way, Father God. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for that, Sister Bray. Well, guys, until next time. And also, just a side note, uh, chat time will pass. <laughs> chat time. <laughs> Chat time with Pastor will be coming back soon uh, on Thursday nights instead of Tuesdays. Uh, just been really, oh, no. really, really, really busy with uh, with work and uh, you know and school and stuff. But we're gonna bring that back. I'm sure, I just miss this stuff right here too. But uh, anyways, uh, uh, if, that, if that's a schedule conflict, y'all talk to me offline and we'll figure that. We'll figure it out if we have to do it another day. Um, all right, so love y'all. We'll see y'all next time. See you Sunday. God bless y'all. Hey. God bless. Don't, don't, don't.